Shut up and sit down. Howdy guys, it's Andy from Big Mech's Workshop Paint Studio, and today I'm painting a High Fleet Bainoff uh, Tyranid Ravener. Uh, apologies for the first minute or so's camera work, uh, it's a little bit dark, but it does um, get brightened up short, um, shortly. So, uh, yeah, it's a Tyranid. So, uh, this is a new one for me. Uh, we're doing a bit of everything, a bit of airbrush work, and also some glazing regular brush work as well. So, just stick, uh, stick with it if you are. Uh, more of a brush uh, user. So the first colour is Burnt Red done with the airbrush and Burnt Red is a Vallejo model colour. Um, now using Vallejo's Red which is 76102. Uh, this is important because there's two types of, two colours of red from the same range uh, with different barcode numbers as they are subtly different sh uh, shades. And I'm just lifting the uh, initial colour up with the uh, first red, um, brighten it up somewhat, and here we go, we're a little bit brighter now on the uh, camera as well. So once I've got some early highlights in, it's now added, I'm now using Model Air's uh, 71003 red, red, and again highlighting all the areas, uh, getting a really um, bright, vibrant colour on there. And this is just to uh, add some uh, easy to work detailing uh, later on. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of uh, transitions on this. I'm going to go for a, a sort of a wormy colour. I want it to look sort of something what we'd recognise as a uh, sort of a subterranean animal. So I've added some of uh, Scale 75's Moonray Flesh to it now. And this is sort of a, a pinky colour. It's just going to uh, lighten it up really nicely. Um, Rakar Flesh uh, could be used as well in the same way. This is sort of a very peachy um, colour to uh, add to your red, so it's, just be uh, careful with it and don't overdo it. But you do get a really nice highlight to this. So now I've added even more Moon Rain Flesh to the same colour, and you can see it's coming up a little bit pinky now. So it's taking away some of that rich redness and uh, becoming more of a natural colour. I'm just uh, playing around, I've never painted anything like this before. I've never had any interest in um, Tyranids as a uh, faction for myself, so I've never uh, got the opportunity to have a try of these colours, but it was interesting using uh, the colours in uh, a different way. And obviously, um, High Fleet Beam is one of the more famous of the uh, Tyranid core schemes, so it's, uh, it, was, it was a bit of a uh, bit, bit of a entertainment for myself, uh, changing something what everyone would recognise. So now, on to the brushwork now, and it is Tusk Girl Fur. Um, which everyone will recognise from GW, which is a very sort of pinky uh, brown colour. It's something I tend to use for my um, flesh base on human type uh, skin tones. As, um, it's got a nice rich colour tone to it, so you uh, don't need to add any washes to it uh, for human flesh. And this is uh, starting to add to the highlights uh, um, across the entire model. Uh, picking out the details wherever possible. So now I'm throwing in the first wash, and there's a few washes on this because it's got a lot of depth uh, on the model built in. And this is a mix of um, Red Tone by Army Painter, Strong Tone, uh, again by Army Painter, and I've thinned it down with some airbrush thinners. And this uh, allows it to uh, be used quite liberally uh, without any real risk of it pulling in un un unwanted places. So you don't get the streaks where what you would get with a normal uh, wash if thinned down with water. So next is the uh, highlight with Bugman's Glow. I'm starting to just pick out the detail work uh, around the... Uh, I'm not sure, uh, what, what would you call it? It's not the, the chitin, uh, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but it's got uh, a lot of breaks in, the, uh, in its wear the uh, bends would be, and I'm picking out these areas for the uh, Bubbins Glow highlight. So once the first layer of Bubbins Glow has gone down, there's now a red tone wash, uh, just to bring those uh, colours together. So to make the Bubbins Glow a little bit more red rather than pink, and it's just adding extra depth into the recesses as well. 
And all, all I'm doing is I'm just picking out the recesses. It's uh, not a, as sloppy as I would do with the uh, thin down wash. It's a, it is slightly thin down, but it's not as thin down as normal uh, for my own washes. So I'm just I'm able to um, just focus it a little bit better. So onto the claws now, and it is Talon sand. As you can see, it's very very thin. I'm wanting to build up that colour nicely. And I'm using um, because these claws are very um, very big, very large. I'm able to use a nice big brush to get the um, colour down on there uh, to save a bit of time. And once I've got the uh, decent um, layer, it takes a couple of layers because obviously, as you can see, it's very thin. Once I've got a decent layer, we can start um, bringing the bone colour out of, of the uh, claws to make them look a bit more interesting. On the back plating, the exoskeleton, it is Dark Prussian Blue by uh, the Lowe's Model Colour range. Now this is a colour what I also use for Night Lords. It's a very, very rich dark blue. So if you want something dark, this is a good place to, uh, good place to go. It's more, there's a bit more life to it than there is uh, Cantor Blue, which is a similar sort of colour. But Cantor seems to uh, be a little bit on the flat side. and uh, This is a bit more vibrant. And as you can see, I'm just getting adding some nice thin layers to the uh, exoskeleton with the blue to get a really good colour. Now, it's obviously, as always, I'm using very thin colours, so it's going to take a few layers to get up there to get the uh, colour of um, a nice solid colour. And as you can see, I did actually black out the um, exoskeleton as well. It uh, just allows me to get a nice even colour across the entire model. So back onto the claws again, and I'm adding some flat brown. And what I'm doing is uh, adding striations into it and putting my own personal detail onto the model. So this is an old metal model, so um, some of the detail is a little bit lacking. And so this is a very old model there. So I'm just adding a little bit of extra work into the uh, claws to make them look a bit more interesting. Now obviously you need to use a, a nice pointed brush at this point uh, for this, but don't worry about the shape of the uh, brown work just yet, as that'll come out um, more when you start adding highlights and things. So now, once I've got some uh, level of detail painted into the claws, I'm adding an Agrax Earth Shade to just add some more depth to the, um, the joins between the claws and the, the limb itself. Uh, stretching the Agrax up, all, all the way to the end row, but um, l letting most of it uh, sit where the limb meets the claw. After the Agrax has gone down, I'm now adding Talon Sand again, and I'm starting to paint in the detail of the striations um, br bringing some actual shapes to them now, so making them more the striation, uh, what I've painted in, more uh, triangular in shape, making them look a bit more natural. And I'm just adding some highlights towards the front, towards the leading edge, starting to make that um, blade look a lot sharper. So next is Zandri Dust uh, by GW. I'm using um, a GW. A small layer at this point, um, as I'm just starting to add highlights to the uh, claw itself and bringing up the claw to a bone. I'm doing this throughout all the uh, spike sections uh, on, across the model, uh, bringing them all to a, this sort of bright, bony colour as a, a unified piece. After the Zandri Dust, it is Carrick Stone, uh, another GW paint, and I'm doing much the same thing. I'm just starting further up along the uh, blade now. So whereas I started uh, right maybe a third of the way in on the uh, Zandri Dust, I'm starting a little bit closer towards the um, leading edges. Uh, sometimes stretching it back a bit further just to make the uh, highlights a little bit more interesting. And on to Ubshabti Bone now, again another GW paint, and this I'm doing exactly the same thing, but I'm starting it even closer towards the tip of the uh, blades. 
and adding extra detail work onto the claws. Again, um, making the bones look a lot more natural uh, and making them all either got defects inbuilt into them. And finally onto the uh, tips of the uh, teeth and the claws, it is ivory. Uh, just to add that final little bit of uh, sharpness to the leading edges. Keeping the overall amount of ivory to a minimum as I don't want the colours of the claws to be too bright, although on the teeth uh, they really do need to stand out a little bit against the uh, redness of the mouth. On to a final shade of the claws, which is a, bit of a, a little bit of agrax which has been really thinned down and just uh, really starts to show off the detail work what you've added in with the paintbrush. It just adds that little bit of extra depth to the uh, detail work. I'm brushing away some of it with my finger uh, so there's not too much on there uh, where I don't want it to be. So Cantor Blue for the first highlight of the dark brushing. Now as you can see it's a very similar colour. It doesn't stand out a hell of a lot but it is a subtle amount, it is a small amount back, um, brighter than dark brushing blue and keeping the layers very thin and just building up that colour to get the best layer I can possibly have. Now I'm also doing something uh, what you sometimes see on some of the uh, other uh, painted tunes out there which is having the brighter sort of lines going up and down the back of the uh, carapace. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to have a, a little bit of a go at that just to see how easy it is to do. So next is McCrag Blue. As you can see I'm just starting to uh, add some uh, highlights towards the edges of the, the bottom edges of the uh, armour where the light will um, catch, uh, catch the most but I'm also adding some uh, feathering into the, into the armour plate as well uh, just to uh, bring that core together a little bit and also add that de de detail work what you see on some of the uh, other work um, across the internet It's now Alatop Blue now, which is a very, very bright colour. It's a slightly different hue to the uh, ones I've been using. And uh, it's quite a vibrant one. I'm just doing exactly the same thing, obviously starting in a narrower pe uh, place now. But I'm also adding the mo extra details in around the breaks in the armour. Uh, just to uh, make, make the armour look that bit more interesting. It also allows the colours to start showing through. If you keep it irregular, you can sometimes see, you can see some of the darker colours through as well. So it makes the uh, armour plating look a little bit more interesting. So now at this point, I wasn't I wasn't totally happy with how the um, colours were going together. So I got the GW's Gilliman Blue Glaze out. And literally just lay, uh, lay that across the top of the um, blue colour uh, and it just blended the colours together. It worked a little bit like a, like a wash but it sits uh, more on the flat panels uh, than a washboard normally would. And it just blended those colours together so, um, nicely. And I've not used much in the way of glazes. I've had this one for a long time and I've never really got around to using it. So this was a, a bit of a first for me as well. And take this blue onto the uh, final highlights now, and just to bring those uh, the, uh, them, those defects and high points on on the model, adding some extra uh, lines into the armor as well, just to uh, break up them flat colors. And you get a really cool effect when you start doing it that way, and it is really easy. All you need is just a bit of patience and a small narrow brush with a good point, and you can bring those. Um, weird sort of line looks into the uh, armour plating on the uh, back of the Tyranid uh, you do get a kind of a cool effect as well so now I've added Norn Oil as a wash now as I wanted to get uh, especially in the chest area and across the front of its uh, snake leg thing um, I wanted to add some real dark cores into the recesses so it's Norn Oil across the uh, front areas of the model uh, start picking out the detail work and getting um, everywhere around uh, the, the deepest sections a little bit darker and really start to bring the course together. 
and I'm using cold grey to just add a little bit of highlight work into the uh, black sections on the recesses of the armour uh, around the joints of the elbows and that just to add a little bit of life towards the, these sections obviously I'm using it really thin and I'm uh, just adding some just, just a little bit of life onto it make it look about a bit more interesting to finish it off now this is a very fast paint job it's very easy to replicate you get a, with this you'll get a very decent tabletop standard model um, in a couple of hours uh, quite easy and you can uh, batch paint the entire army to look something similar to this so after it's had its uh, pin wash uh, using uh, oil paints and uh, thinners uh, matte varnish on top and there you have a very simple but kind of cool looking Tyranid Ravener. I'm quite happy with that, uh, um, with how it uh, went in the end. I uh, did make a few mistakes. If you notice at the beginning of the video I, I hadn't filled in a section of the tail so I had to go back and do that. I definitely uh, would use an army in this cause. I think these, this cause would actually quite uh, stand out against some of our other darker stuff. So I'd make an interesting cause scheme for that. Anyway, I hope uh, you enjoyed this video, listening to me waffle on for the last 20 minutes or so. And uh, we've obviously got some thank yous. So first, if you want to see more of this sort of content, plus our regular giveaways, please hit like and subscribe and share with your friends. Uh, also, massive thank yous to DWAC, Warren, Love Minis, The Oak Boys, Ludwig Offbauer, Kit Lindquist and Andy Ackermas of Dawn. You are our top paying Patreons and we could not do this without you. Check out our other videos as well. We've got loads on there now. Uh, we've got... Uh, we have competitions every month as well. And finally, a massive thank you to uh, The Outpost, uh, which is our affiliate link. Check the links below. Uh, we have um, stuff from all over the place. The Outpost is where, a good place to get anything you need for the hobby to get you going. Uh, all the stuff uh, we use, uh, all our equipment we, supply, we have, uh, could be uh, bought from The Outpost. So check them guys out as well. Uh, okay, guys, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.